If you got big dreams and bad jeans, you were in the right place. These shirts are available at barbellapparel.com. Hit the link below. Today, we are going to go over mesocycle pairings. Basically, when you run a block of training and you want to populate it with all the cool, neat exercises you want to try out that are going to just scratch you right where you itch. They're going to hit all your weaknesses, overhaul your physique, make you more well-rounded, and just shoot your lifts into the stratosphere. It can become a little daunting because there are so many countless variations you can apply, but then also the order of those exercises can get a little bit wonky. If you put things in the wrong order, you might find that you're a little too fatigued or you might find that you're not fatigued enough. So I'm giving my recommendations for which exercise I like to put together, how I handle the order and kind of the directionality because I do like to change exercises from block to block. And if we can get those things in the beginning to carry over to those things we do at the end a little more cleanly, then we will have a sharper peak. And when it is time to go hit that epic one rep max after we've earned it, after that 12, 16, 24 week cycle that we went on, we will know that we are as prepared as we could possibly be. Now these principles are all infused into base strength AI. All of the exercises are chosen, pre-selected based on your specific weaknesses that you plug in there. And you also have the ability to plug in new stuff. If you have equipment that allows you to do unique exercises, if you have your preference, if you have the experience to know what weaknesses you need to work on or what exercise order you like to work in, you can change those, adjust those, enter those in yourself. All you do is assign a one rep max and the weight gets populated for you and it adjusts based on the RPE that you enter in set to set. I'm using Base Strength AI to get ready for Worlds. You can try it out for free, follow me along. Take the questionnaire right now, just hit that link below. I'm really proud of how this came out. It's the heart of old school training. It's the mind of cutting edge AI. Now, without further ado, these are my favorite mesocycle pairings for bench press. And stay tuned because we're also doing squat, deadlift, and overhead in the future. So all of my programs follow a similar template. We start off usually with the main lift or something very, very close to the main lift. You might do like touch and go bench as opposed to pause bench or something like that, but it's usually very close. And then we follow it up with similar variations. Now something like Bull Mastiff, you only do one variation, and then there's a lot of accessory work, where a 70s powerlifter puts a lot more emphasis on barbell work. So you get two variations, and then some accessory, but not nearly as much in terms of machine, dumbbell isolation work, and so on. Now, the variations are important. You can absolutely do barbell only uh, progressions. They're simple, they work, but they get stale very easily, they get monotonous, and you can't do as much total work because more variety allows you to handle more volume. You're not hitting the exact same structure the exact same way. So there's almost a recovery element in there. Um, you also get more well-rounded growth, which is gonna prevent weak areas. You can use them to target current weak areas that are keeping your potential for strength down. And you can build specific qualities that are in line with the purpose of the block that we're on. So if we're in a hypertrophy block, there are movements that are a little bit better for that versus if we're in, let's say, a peaking block and you need to get really, really comfortable with a shit ton of weight, there's exercises that are better for that. And that's basically how the base and peak dynamic works out. It's basically a simplified way of thinking about periodization in general, broad general qualities in the beginning that set you up for the more specific qualities that you're going to be looking at near contest day, or even if you don't compete, just one rep max day. Those are different skill sets and we want to develop those in a different sequence. So base phase, you need more mass, everywhere. You might have weaknesses you want to work on, but you just need more mass. Your pecs, your shoulders, your triceps, your back and biceps all need to be bigger in some capacity if you want to continue increasing your ceiling for strength. And it also allows you to increase your work capacity and increase technique. Because even if you're working in a different threshold, all of those touches over and over and over still have some technical carryover. So by the time you get to have your weights, you're a little more comfortable. It's also a very important break from doing the same goddamn thing over and over. The breaks from the monotony of heavy specific stuff is so important because people get stuck doing what they think optimal training is and they just never adjust it. And the types of things we focus on to this end, higher reps generally, although that'll change person to person, program to program, but usually you're doing something beyond singles, doubles, and triples, more range of motion, more time under tension, things we generally consider as having more of a kind of work component to it, a hypertrophy component, uh, and typically more disadvantaged positions because we're not so worried about extreme overload, we're worried about development, and you get good development when your leverages are bad, and that means weight on the bar might actually be really low. Now the peak phase, that's specific. That's where it might be an actual peak for a meet, or it might just be kind of a general phase where you're just taking some time to get comfortable with heavier weights. I use it in a very broad sense, but for strength, we want specific neurological development because that is exactly what is gonna optimize our ability to move weight right now. So 
more strain, more speed, more skill, greater recovery from the drop in training volume. That's big. You go from all this work, you drop the amount of work, you're more recovered so you can lift heavier and still recover. Lower rep ranges, the lower the rep, the more strength specific it is. Fives are great for strength, but threes are better and ones are ultimately better than that. Uh, range of motion is gonna be specific to the technique, so we're not arbitrarily doing a bunch of different types of range of motion. It's does this allow us to handle more weight, to get used to more, um, load and get our nervous system comfortable with that. Does this provide some value to some weak point that we have that we need to shore up? And typically we're in more advantaged positions because that allows us to handle more weight. So you're looking at lockouts, board presses, rack pulls, things like that. Uh, or we're trying to get our nervous system fired up for starting power by doing a lot of paused stuff. So for benching in the base phase, Assume higher reps, not every program in their kind of volume or hypertrophy phases are gonna use 10s and 12s like I do, but assuming higher reps are normal, paused work, pin work, overloaded top end work, it's not ideal. That's not to say that you can't do it, but the sheer amount of fatigue you're gonna rack up is gonna make it difficult to pick weights appropriately because you really can't strain the way you want to on those without getting so fatigued that sets three, four, five just turn into garbage and then, oh, I have two more exercises at the same set and rep range after that. So that tends to burn you out very quick. It's a little tricky to implement those. So I don't really mess with them so much. In the base phase, I like to emphasize range of motion, time under tension, continuous movement. I don't like to rest in between reps. So I pulse my squats. I like to go, 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 go. Variety is also clutch because we want well-rounded physical development. That's going to increase our ceiling, make us more efficient. So for benching, these are your options. You can change your grip. Uh, wide, narrow, neutral, even reverse grip is a good uh, trade-off. And those are all viable options that hit the same muscles, similar pattern, but are just different enough where you're gonna get a different growth stimulus and you are going to get kind of a recovery effect to allow you to train more frequently. You can change the range of motion. You go to a deficit, guillotine to your neck, really stretch the pecs out. You do incline, a spotto bench, things like that. I find these are very good hypertrophy options uh, that do well to start you out when the weight's a bit lighter and you're just getting used to a shit ton of volume. You can change the angle. You can decline. I prefer incline because there's more range of motion associated with it. And uh, the variety I think is nicer. People usually use decline to just overload and feel like they're stronger than they are. And you can change the modality. You know, dips, dumbbells, machine smith, doesn't all have to be barbells. I prioritize barbells, but especially like your third exercise in something like 70s powerlifter, you can absolutely supplement a different type of press and still get a very productive effect. Now your goal, the tricky thing here is to order the movements in a way that does not fatigue you exponentially. This is where people get screwed up. 70s powerlifter specifically, it's three barbell exercises and then your isolation stuff. Well, barbell exercise, you need to be fresh enough to get quality work in. So if you're taking everything to RP10, you're gonna fatigue too fast. If the nature of the exercise blows out a smaller muscle, like your triceps, you're gonna be useless no matter what your exercises are at the end. So order becomes really important. So a good generalized uh, way to approach this. I usually start with a competition bench press, I'll do touch and go. Some people pause, apparently. I learned this from Sheether recently, but uh, but I wouldn't pause unless I'm in the last you know eight or 10 weeks going into a meet or if I was using it as a specific variation. Generally high rep stuff, my competition bench is done touch and go. And I like a little more variety in the angles uh, and with my grip. So you can do an incline bench to follow up and you'll be a little toasted after that. But then if you go to wider close grip, we're switching the emphasis either to your chest or your triceps. It's okay at this point if we gas those the hell out because everything after this is isolation. So you can kind of leave it all there. So I like the most kind of uh, scorched earth exercise to be last. And I like to make sure the variety in the first two is such that the first exercise isn't gonna screw me for the second and the second won't screw me for the third. Now for Bull Mastiff, if you're looking at the exercise at 70s Power Lifter, Bull Mastiff, it's only two. So generally, if I'm only doing two, I like my competition lift. And then I like to select the one that is most conducive to the immediate goal. When we're going heavier in the peak phase, it's going to be more specific to the final lift that I'm going to be executing. Uh, if it's in the base phase, I'm generally gonna pick the movement that I think has the most developmental sauce on. So for, in this case, I'll do the comp bench. I like going wide or close and I can torch, if I'm in a tricep phase, I'll focus on that. They're both good general development exercises, but you can prioritize them also if you think you're deficient in one uh, one side or the other. Bull Massive, I'd probably keep it to a barbell, 70s power lifter. I, you can substitute Smith dumbbell machines, use other modalities for that third exercise. I think that's absolutely fine, at least in the base phase where we're more generalized. Now, if we're going into something specific, if you want tricep development in that base phase, that's something I need 
needed. So I picked exercises that were going to require a little bit more. Now this is tricky because like I said, if you blow your triceps out early, you're useless no matter what exercise you pick. So I stay with the competition bench after that, I do weighted dips, heavy on the triceps, good pressing movement, mechanically very different. We took a big step away from the skill specific work, but we're still doing a heavy press that we can progress. And generally you're not going to be uh, hindered by your competition benching. After that, I'll do something that really hammers the triceps with a barbell, leave it all there. Close grip incline is a favorite of mine because you get a lot of triceps going close grip, but also you get a lot of range of motion with the incline. It feels like you're pressing twice as far. And if, I mean, five sets of 10, 70s power lifter. I'm showing the highest volume weeks, by the way. Five sets of 10 for you know 15 total work sets. At that point, your triceps are toast, but getting that full range, that stretch, and then pushing together, blasting through, great tricep finisher. And because the dips and the close grip incline different movement patterns. You're not going to find so much that the fatigue you get from one just like demolishes you for the second. It's going to accumulate, but it's not going to demolish you. Now it's important to know picking effort and RPEs and these exercises, you want to pick the appropriate amount of effort at no point. Are you wanting to fail on the last one? In fact, for the five by tens, even if the weight starts to slow, I'll rack it or even drop the weight because you only have to be at like an RP eight for multiple sets before you get full of blood, you get fatigued, you go into that next exercise, you're useless. So it's kind of an art form picking appropriate exercise here before you build a tolerance to this amount of volume and you can recover better, which is the point of all this, by the way, not to PR tomorrow, but to build capacity over time to set you up for the actual strength specific phase. So the example in bull massive, I hold on to the close grip incline. Close grip incline isn't hugely specific, but it's more specific than dips. More importantly, I think the general development is gonna be more productive and I can still utilize other tricep variations for the isolation. This is another example I like for tricep specific work, going from something like a competition bench to an incline bench, even if you're using the same grip, again, the incline bench is a longer range of motion. So the triceps, they're gonna get a bit of activation there. And from there, you can move to something that is kind of guaranteed to annihilate the triceps. Again, it's a third exercise. It's okay if we toast it. We got a lot of good quality pressing work in. The last five sets, we're gonna do something where you can just blow them out, a close grip Smith machine. The Smith machine provides stability. That allows you to actually get the triceps to strain. It's not balance, it's not coordination. You can put all of the stress in there and you're gonna find the fatigue builds up really quick, but the stimulus is also much, much higher. And for Bull Massive, I would bias towards that as a developmental exercise before going in and doing the huge array of isolation work that I have uh, selected there. Now, if we wanna switch to chest, let's say you got some nice Christmas hams for triceps that just kind of hang in your shirt, but you got this little pigeon chest. You're like, you know what? I gotta get my chest filled out so I can actually get the weight off because once I get it here, I can bench press 600 pounds, but I can't get 275 off my chest. So you need a little more chest development. Maybe it's just aesthetics. So again, starting out with a competition bench, now we need to focus on disadvantaging ourselves at the bottom, either going through more range of motion or pausing or going with a wider grip. So wide spotto bench, stopping just an inch off your chest, even though technically it's a higher range of motion, not having your sternum to support the weight is very different if you're not used to it. Spotto bench, just an inch right off the chest, controlling that change of direction, you'll find is very good for stimulating bottom end strength and it's gonna require a bit more out of your chest. Then you move to something more aggressive because third exercise doesn't matter, guillotine, very aggressive, more aggressive, again, if you do it in the Smith machine where you have complete stability. And in Bull Massive, I would bias to the Spotto bench because it's just a bit more specific. Now, another example would be to make a small tweak to the movement. So you're getting a bit more stimulation on your competition setup. I didn't do this for triceps because blowing your triceps out at all is gonna ruin the rest of your pressing, but you can make the press a little harder at the bottom and not be that much worse for wear. So again, starting out with the Spotto bench, it's essentially a bench. You're just a couple millimeters higher in controlling that change of direction. Then you can go to something like a deficit after to really work the stretch. If you have an arch nemesis bar, which I have, link below to that. Or if you have something like a, a buffalo bar, some cambered bar that you like benching with, you can do that. They're both disadvantaging you at the bottom, just in subtly different ways, and they go very nice together. And then again, to burn yourself out, you can go a little cuckoo, go something that is a little bit more kind of blood and guts bodybuildery. I like one and a half reps. If you've never done that, that's a good one. So 10 feels more like 15, going from the bottom all the way up, halfway up. That's one rep. 
And you, again, can do it somewhere where you're stable. You can do it on a machine. The stimulus is going to be greater. You can absolutely do it on a barbell. These go fine in a home gym. I'm actually doing it in my home gym. So I use a barbell for most of these. And then again, the more specific one tends to be what I pick. If I only have to pick one, the wide grip deficit is what I would go with. So all of those movements, very good variations for complementing your flat bench press, your competition setup. Uh, pretty damn well guaranteed to add some mass to your ass. Those are all very good exercises for increasing general size. And if you come out of a long productive block, if you run through one or two blocks with those exercises, enough to see that you've improved at them, I guarantee you're gonna be a little bigger, a little more well-rounded. And by the time you start tapering down to heavier lifts, you're going to feel a lot better. So that takes us to the peak phase the heavy phase, the more specific phase. So here our priorities shift. Weight and force production take priority. Yes, we need to handle weight on the bar. We also need to make sure that we're focusing on more maximal force production rather than the endurance and work capacity that we focused on in the beginning. Uh, disadvantage movements are not ideal for this. Again, you can use it, but let's say something like a front squat on squat day. Good, for, I think, for general development and starting you out early on. Not great for when you have a heavy ass squat coming up in eight weeks and you need to start straining against those loads because the weight has to be so much lighter and it's much less specific. So I would not really dial into disadvantage movements. Most of the stuff we're gonna be doing is actually more advantage so we can work against the strain. The focus is gonna be on stability. So you don't wanna be in a weak position or really unbalanced. Focus on specificity. So you're gonna limit how much changes you make to grip, to the modality, to the angle. You're not gonna be doing incline bench, you know, in the weeks before a, a one rep max uh, for a flat bench or if you have a big contest coming up. And the focus is also gonna be on starting power at the bottom lockout power at the top, and then of course, absolute weight. So to emphasize starting power, any pause variation, anything where you come down, you hang out at the bottom and you fire without the stretch reflex, absolutely great for that. You can float it, you can do a spot open, you can sink it, you can do a pin, a bottom up press, anything where you're at a dead stop. To emphasize lockout, this is what people like to do because you really get to handle the weight here, uh, it's anything with bands or chains accommodating resistance where it gets heavier towards the top. I like that because supporting weight at the top through a partial range of motion like a board press or a pin press, great for overloading the top, but it doesn't do it in the context of the full range of motion. So there is something to be said for learning to fire through and then accelerate and press harder, 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 harder. As the bands get pulled tight, as the chains uh, get lifted off the ground, that is more specific and you also have the potential for handling a huge amount of overload there. A little trickier to program, but if you're going off this where you're just trying to stay in like some RP sweet spot, you can move it set to set based on how it feels. You don't have to follow some elaborate chart for rigging it up. Just make sure it's not too light, it's not too heavy. A little trial and error there. So a generalized peak phase uh, recommendation. Again, pause comp bench, now we're closer. So you're gonna do the paused variation for your entire specific block of training. Then going into something like a three board bench. So we're dealing with the top end, strong range of motion. So overload's gonna be higher. Triceps, you're gonna get stronger from this. We're gonna get accustomed to heavy lockouts, getting our nervous system set to heavy loads. You should be handling more weight here than you did in your paused competition bench setup. And then you can do something like a bottom up bench or a dead press to take care of the bottom end. That's where you crawl under the bench, you have it on the pin so it's right here. You, you wiggle your hands up, you get set, and then you press from a dead stop. Zero stretch reflex, feels like shit at first. As you get used to it, you feel that purchase you get at the bottom, it is game changing. Although I do not like that as a standalone because the lack of specificity is coming down, loading in, and then moving back up. That missing component is not something you wanna ditch entirely. So in Bull Massive, I would just go to the three board press uh, as opposed to the, the bottom up bench. A top end, so instead of triceps, now we're looking at range of motion, a top end version. Again, pause competition bench. Going into a pin press, about four inches above the chest, that's something like a two board press. You could experiment going higher. Uh, let's say you have a stick midpoint, or let's say your triceps are just really weak and you wanna set the pins to where you're targeting on that, you can. Again, weight's gonna be much, much higher but to keep the stress on your triceps, that third exercise, again, we're going to not blow your wad on the second one. You're handling more weight, but it shouldn't just decimate you. The third exercise, you can blow your wad a little bit. Banded spotto benches, I like. I really like having to come down, float the weight. We're still conditioning a violent start. The weight's a little bit lighter, so we can put speed on it. So now there's a speed component. And then as the bands get taken out, the triceps, you really have to practice flossing that elbow through. So now it's 
yes, hitting the triceps, but we're conditioning that movement pattern, the driving yourself into the bench as those elbows come in, just like you push your hips into a deadlift. Another generic top end would be really just to kind of flip how we handle those, the, the partial range of motion compared to kind of the banded paused version. If you're going to do banded work close to a peak, I do recommend you pause it. I think you're going to get a lot more out of it and you're going to really learn how to start firing strong and then keep firing. And then a narrow pin press where you make a little adjustment to the grip, maybe not as close as you're used to, but just one or two fingers in and doing a pin press from there, you're going to find that's a whole different ball game. And again, if your triceps are weak, that purchase that you find from starting in a disadvantaged position and then cranking in, eventually the load starts to climb up pretty quickly, but it's going to be in the context of this particular weakness that you have. And if you're like me, once you get the bar moving, it tends to lock out. I get stapled right off my chest, if not a couple inches above. So these are the types of things I like to focus on. To focus on the bottom end, so we're already getting some good quality paused work. So that is a good amount of bottom end focus. And if we're aggressive at the start, we're working really hard in that position. What we can do is do a slight variation where we give us something to push into, to force us to accelerate all the way through, but we start ourselves from a little bit of a disadvantaged position. So the difference between a pause competition bench, especially one where you're arched up a little bit and say something like a pause deficit, maybe with your shoulders relaxed a little bit more, that's a big difference in the bottom position of your chest. So I would start out with the advantaged version, which is the competition bench setup, and then go into one that's more disadvantaged, which is a deficit, and then finishing with something like a wide grip spot. Again, again, the last exercise, uh, leaving it all on the table by taking your uh, grip out a little bit. Weight is probably gonna be a bit lighter here, but exercising that control again in that disadvantaged position, that's going to just overhaul your strength at the bottom. We still get a little bit of an overload from being able to put bands onto that second exercise while we're still somewhat fresh. Five triples shouldn't be enough to wreck you for something like a five by five. And then on the spotto, we can kind of leave it all there. You know, for bull mastiff, the more specific exercise that we would want to keep in would be something like the banded pause deficit variation. And another take on a bottom end pairing would be a longer pause, again, to a deficit. With the longer pause, we'll go ahead and take the bands off because we don't wanna get stapled completely. And then you can implement something like the bottom-up bench, which I really do like. Least specific exercise gets put at the end. The one that's going to wreck you the most gets put at the end. So I think bottom-up bench goes good there. And that is just all pure firing power from the start. That's what gives you that kick off the blocks. There's no way you go through this block and leave without feeling like somebody stitch in a third pectoral muscle. You're just gonna be so nasty strong at the bottom. And then ideally, as you realize your full run into your peak, you can reevaluate. See, are my weaknesses the same? Have they leveled out maybe this caught up so now i'm in more generalized territory where i'm trying to bring everything up together it's always up to you to be able to figure out what the next step is and think logically the most important thing is you're picking generally good exercises and working to progress them this stuff is the cherry on top so make sure you're picking good weights you're not just destroying yourself by going too heavy or too hard and bashing your head against a bar make sure you're paying attention to your recovery and make sure as time goes on you're demonstrating that you got better at these movements and you will be a-okay thank you so much for watching guys stay tuned for the next installments we're doing squat deadlift and overhead press let me know what you think until next time this is bromley i'll see you